Gracias, Mariela. And uh, also, Roxana, for allowing us to come together in fora such as this, and really for your enthusiasm, not only in this context, but also as part of the world conferences. And I must declare, uh, like Dr. Bauter, I have a bit of a conflict of interest with my enthusiasm around the world conferences, uh, given my role on the governing board. However, I am absolutely delighted to be able to reflect upon the new training opportunities and role of networks that emerged in the context of the Seventh World Conference in Cape Town, South Africa. This may look like uh, just another urban sunset, but in fact, this was the sunset on the last day of our conference. And of course, there is always the bittersweet moment of knowing that you are now needing to move on, say goodbye to your old friends and new friends, but also with new optimism and hope for bringing home the things that you've learned in the context of the World Conference. So thank you for the honor of being here to speak with you all. I notice we have attendees from Uganda, Peru, all around the world, uh, Panama. So welcome and thank you for joining us for this conversation. This concept of training has of course been embedded in the world conferences since their inception however with the grace and joy of our three co-chairs obviously this is dr bauter here and dr sabina kleinert and dr lynn horn each of whom were the co-chairs for the world conference and as part of their acknowledgement of the importance of training and the positive aspects as dr bauter mentioned the concept of training and encouragement of positive um, inspiring activities as well as effective mentoring were really embedded in the seventh world conference building on the rich foundation of training opportunities that were discussed in previous conferences but also um, adding new elements which i am delighted to share with you today so one of the most important elements that I observed was the fact that we are no longer speaking of simple curricula. For example, in previous training programs 15 or 20 years ago, particularly those that emerged out of the United States in uh, line with what Dr. Bauter was describing with this emphasis on the narrow definition of fabrication, falsification, and plagiarism, instead looking at all kinds of topics that are important, including open science, data management. Some of those are actually part of the Global Health Network curriculum, which I looked at yesterday in preparation for this. Research ethics also being an important theme, but distinct from research integrity. So it's as if we're no longer talking about simple courses in the way that uh, Dr. Bowder described, but we're looking at the learner and also trying to understand what is relevant and practical to them in their practice of research and also academic integrity. The creative teaching modalities were also really inspiring during this recent conference and adapting to cultural and hierarchical settings. This is one example during the gala dinner where we were immersed in the local culture from um, not only face painting and dancing, but also not just observing the dancing, but being engaged in it, which is part of the theme of really engaging learners, not just in a lecture format, but getting people involved along the lines of the superb supervision workshop uh, that Tom Rentaven has uh, developed. And I am hoping uh, eventually maybe something like that could be translated into Spanish and other languages just to engage other international communities in these wonderful programs that exist. So along these lines, uh, there was a survey done at the end of the conference. We heard from one of uh, Lex's also colleagues about the participants in the World Conference. And I believe it's improving, um, increasing as far as the early and mid-career level of involvement. And it was nearly half of the respondents to the survey who were participating in the World Conference who were actually at this um, more we don't want to say junior, but earlier stages of their career, which is actually part of this learning centered approach where they are not only um, designing the programs, but really presenting them, talking about them in engaging ways, 
uh, that allow for much more of the previous knowledge that has been um, built to be expanded upon. And Sophia Pan was one example from Taiwan where she described using educational diagnostic assessments to understand the current level of understanding of a particular student prior to um, providing that kind of training. Dialogue and narrative and reflection were also woven throughout several of the conversations and really making it practical. Marie van der Hoven is one example, looking at the aspect of um, reflection within discussion of gray areas was also one that came through in several of the presentations. Creative teaching tools were absolutely fantastic during this world conference. And unfortunately, as you know, with conferences, you can only attend one session at a time. I was very lucky to be at this one, PJ Wall from Ireland and a Horizon 2020 European Commission funded project where they are actually working with high school students and not just, again, giving them a straight curriculum, asking them to memorize rules and guidelines, but asking them to reflect and draw through creative expression, journal writing, painting, using music and other creative avenues to allow that deep level of understanding and meaning that um, connects to the individual learner and also brings a sense of uh, collaboration through, for example, role play games and the different kinds of art media that can be used to express what integrity means to the individual learner and to the collective group. One of the other fantastic ways of approaching our training was discussed. This is one example uh, where Akpa Inyang described from uh, Ghana his approach, I'm sorry, South Africa, his approach to um, and his colleagues to developing a, an indigenous code of ethics whereby the local communities were actually involved in designing the code themselves and this is again just one example of the kinds of locally authored and and internally driven activities that were really woven throughout the conference. Another was Dr. Kyle Ferguson describing the collaboration with University of Ghana and New York University, whereby they are um, creating a pool of expert researchers who not only have an understanding of the research methodology, but also of research ethics, research integrity and research governance so that they understand how to work and live and function within the systemic and institutional um, environments that Dr. Bowder described and also based upon their internal um, desire to do the right thing based on a, a jointly developed code of ethics. So shifting to networks again, noting that the world conferences have been a fantastic forum for bringing people together around the world and also that there are particular elements that may be relevant to a certain region or distinct um, aspects of legal approaches that vary of course across countries but also within regions similar challenges related to those cultural um, and hierarchical systems in which we work. So through the world conferences, many of the uh, international networks were born. And I believe, and Francis can confirm, uh, that the existence and the growing strength of the African Research Integrity Network was a major factor in their ability to submit a bid for the world conference in Cape Town, South Africa. And the fact that they had come together to share ideas meant that they could then take on this enormous challenge and uh, gratifying accomplishment of being able to host the World Conference in South Africa. There are also, of course, networks in Europe as well as Asia and the Pacific, several national networks such as the National Research Integrity Network, uh, in which Dr. Bowder is also involved, as well as the European Network of Research Integrity Officers, or offices, sorry. Um, and here you can see there are obviously participants from around the world coming together uh, to discuss these ways of uh, addressing common challenges. For example, uh, Roxana Lescano spoke as part of Mad Sorensen's Soaps for Our Eye uh, Symposium, where we brought together Roxana from Peru and um, an individual from Thailand, as well as from 
Africa to be able to identify the common challenges, but also discuss how, for example, we might raise awareness and institutional support for programs such as um, superb supervision and other aspects of being able to design programs that meet people where they are in the context of their research. This is an example of where the world conferences also provide the format for a wonderful informal exchange. This is Shigeki Kamagaichi of the uh, Asia Pacific Network where they are hosting the uh, meeting in Japan next year and for the first time meeting Limbanazo Matandika just over coffee and he invited her to Japan to join this meeting so that the networks also can come together um, and share not only their institutional and historic knowledge but also this sense of knowing that we're in it together through uh, great camaraderie. This is one example of such camaraderie at the uh, Sixth World Conference in Hong Kong, where you can see Roxana and Francis are deep in conversation about some ideas. This is before any of us knew there would be a global pandemic and that we would all be uh, facing restrictions and having to be working online. And through that commitment to supporting each other, we were able to organize webinars and various um, opportunities for exchange around not only many of the issues um, inherent to research integrity and these, these various aspects that make up that tapestry of what it means, but also distinguishing between handling allegations of breaches of integrity and handling human subjects issues or research ethics, for example, in settings where sometimes those two um, intersect and may be sometimes confused as to how to handle them. Again, I invite you, as did Dr. Bowder, to the World Conference's uh, website. This, uh, as Dr. Bowder mentioned, includes the entire program, videos, abstracts. You can find an awful lot more detail, as well as uh, sign up for the mailing list, where you can become a part of this community if you're not already, and hopefully join us uh, when the next eighth conference is announced um, in the coming months. A uh, hearty thanks again to our three co-chairs for bringing the networks and individuals together through the World Conference in Cape Town, South Africa, and also inspiring us with uh, fantastic approaches to research and very rigorous understanding of research assessment and how we um, actually implement these important aspects in very detailed and practical ways. Uh, in our various parts of the world. Thank you again, Asante Nesana from, this is also a member of the um, World Conferences Governing Board previously, Dr. Nicole Foger from Austria, who in the past was the chair of the European Network of Research Integrity Offices. And many thanks again for welcoming us here.